And there we go. Now we're recording. Yep. Is people come in if they'd like to put their name on the agenda and the meeting notes. Um, if we want to start out, it looks like we've had three event applications in the last two weeks, and it's very exciting news. Does anybody have um, who has updates on these applications? Yeah, I do. So um, we've had three applications on. <clears throat> You have been badged already with like gold badges. Okay, one had a gold badge and the other had a silver badge. Um, they did not have like provisions for um accessibility. I think that's that was and then we did ask the like the applicants and they mentioned they do not have for this year. Um that was like a returning applicant. So um for the third one. I am um, the review has finished um, I think yesterday so I'm going to like assign the badge so yeah that's like the update for that one. I would say that it seems like the application to review to badge process is pretty efficient right now like it's yeah it's working really well. Yep it is. Okay. And we have um, the badging website design and development. It's we have here that some folks in Chaos Africa are working on this. Um, can we get? Yeah. So I I don't think we brought that. I, okay, I think we've discussed. I don't know much we were on that call when we discussed having. Um, I brought the discussion about you know a badging website. So um, I kind of like also brought that discussion during the Chaos Africa meeting and um, some folks have, you know, volunteered to um, take lead on doing like the, the websites, um, starting with design and then development. I know Matt, we talked about GitHub pages, but the understanding I got from GitHub pages like for hosting. So we still do need um, what to build the site with. Um, it takes that to just to build the sites. Um, so some folks in Chaos Africa have volunteered to do that. Um, I don't know if the designer is here. Um, they are not here, but Uhoma is here. Um, Homa will be doing like the development, like leading efforts with development. So we'll be planning that in a couple of weeks, but maybe we might want to discuss what maybe what we want to display on the website on this meeting and, you know, high level things that they, they can consider when they are thinking of designing and developing too. I was wondering that too, like, it, it seems like it would be a little long to put all the badged events on there. That list is pretty long at this point, at least on GitHub, but we could, that would be one yeah. obvious option. You can make it a, <clears throat> I mean, a searchable list if somebody wanted to look, you know. I could just make it one of those tab, like a second tab on the page to tab off to. And yeah, then like participation. Yeah. Okay, that's that's um great. How about we'd also want to display project badging too. Something about project badging. Coming and soon. Like, <laughs> yeah, maybe a page that says it, it um the about and coming soon down at the end if the development does not um is released before project badging project badging we could also put a banner at the top of the page it says like under construction this is a new project and then the planning stages or something like that as well yeah that, that's true that's nice Okay, I think someone taking notes or okay, yeah. Someone is yeah, the anonymous giraffe. Yeah, me. 
Okay, thank you, Matt. So yeah, I'll take this back to the group and subsequently, you know, um, keep giving updates on how that's going. I think um, I put in there too that it reminded me when you said one of the events got a silver badge this week, that somehow we expressed that all badges are awesome badges. Like, that it's not something less if you get a silver badge or... Yeah. Uh, we can say like any badge is a um, is a great accomplishment because it takes you above um, and shows that you've put in the effort for the DEI. Um, a gold badge just means that it's a more um, maybe mature event that has um, spent more um, that's worked its way through the levels or something like that so that people don't feel like their beginning event is worth less. Yeah, I like that. Um, yeah, me too. The word mature makes beginner ones feel like they have a place to start because they, they acknowledge that their event is not mature at the beginning. Okay. <clears throat> not sure how to say that like i'm i'm trying to figure i haven't had enough coffee to frame <laughs> um like experience isn't the right word no because experience you could have yeah. a, a new event who has a planner who's been there for in yeah. the industry for 20 years you don't want to use that word no <laughs> I, that's um, fine no, like mature, um, seasoned. Well, I put mature in there. New events just don't have. Right. I would say um, more just like longer running events have um, gold, gold badges show um, the maturity in the DEI space. Okay, I mean, I put something there. Like, yeah, it's just okay. a, we can work on the text. I, that would I tried to capture what you're saying, Katie. So gold events, gold may just be more mature events. New events, maybe getting going or something like that. Yes, I'm twenty ounces more mm. caffeine, and that'll mm. be there. <laughs> The sentence will flow, flow for forth. <laughs> um, so I, my other question is, so for, for folks that are working on this page, like we have the event badging page that's off of the main chaos.community page, but that's really about like application and maybe we would think about like where we show this page is it off of the chaos.community page is it i don't know you know is that like is that the first thing they see and then from there they can apply for a badge kind of thing so yeah ruth yeah um, i think one of the thoughts with the the designer was that um one would have like a a subdomain uh, that's one of the thoughts and then another is in speaking to would they see the information then apply yes we could also do that that's something we could also do where they see like um information then a link um it could have the form too if you want to display it as a form you know there are like different things we could do um another part of this is um i know i think i've raised this point where um, folks have to, you know, have to sign in with GitHub to submit a badge, right? We could also do something where they could check in with the process on the website. Um, I think that would be like further down the line, you know, um, you know, a process where they do not need um, a GitHub account to follow through with the process. Because I think uh, there was an application some weeks back where 
when I checked, I just um, curiously checked the account and it was like the account was open the same day the application came in. So it was like, yeah, this person definitely opened this account <coughs> to submit, um, to, um, in order to submit the badge. So yeah, it's something that maybe we could look at. Um, people could, um, applicants could manage um, the process from the website or something around that lines. Okay, my first thought is is to have, I'll put it in the minutes, but something like um, the event badging page from, from chaos.community goes to this. <clears throat> we just, I don't know, something like, it just goes to the badging It goes to the badging page and from the badging page, you can learn more and apply to event badge and project badge as we get that rolled out. Yeah. So it's, it would only be, it would be really just three pages at that point. So the first page is this kind of this, the page that we're talking about right now, the badging website. And then from there, they can apply to a, to either of the two different badges. Yeah, that would be like the first, first, maybe first with these. Yep. Because I'm trying also to not like, <coughs> create too many pages or complexity that we yeah for, for the meantime so we don't like prolong things yeah okay thank okay, you we're good for this topic i'll just keep uh, updating subsequently like the meetings and how things are going Cool, thanks. Katie, should we move on? And then, yes. So, Ken, um, Matt, would you like to kind of talk to us about where um, you yeah. have some update with project badging and where we've gone with that? Yeah, you bet. So, there are um, a number of pros and cons for project badging. Um, so the a couple of the, the really positive things that I hear about with project badging are obviously helping projects think about DEI, that the badging initiative could clearly help in that regard. Um, there seems to be really positive response around the DEI.md file, a file that would be housed in a repository somewhere within an organization that describes how a project is attending to those four particular mm -hmm. metrics. So those are those are the real, I think, the positives that I hear about badging, project badging. The 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 cons are um how we could possibly scale the review effort if we need people to do reviews. I think that's a real concern. Um, Certainly, yeah, if it takes off, it's a big concern. Yeah, because if, like, to, to Sean, like, if, if we get like 300 applications in a yeah. month period, like, we did, there's just we, no way we can do it. <laughs> like, it yeah, just, yeah, success could be crushing yeah and then we have a program that suffers a little bit yeah so we want yeah um so we're still we're still just kind of and and also too i'm not sure that mm. the chaos mm. project has the like people to do that scale like that's a huge ask mm. so in the community call mm. there was there were a few suggestions to start reaching out to other communities that might have an interest in project badging as well. 
that we could identify more yeah. uh, potential reviewers. Um, there was a, a suggestion, like kind of the other direction too, that was just encourage for the moment, just encourage projects to include a DEI.md file. That's like the simplest thing. We don't even review it. We, we just say, you know, kind of like a code of, code of like a code of conduct file. The first step is just encouraging people to get that file into their repository. So, um, this is kind of kind of where we're at right now. It's it's still up in the air, and I'm thinking maybe. Ruth for the page, the web page that you were talking about, that um, if they click on project badging, maybe the first thing we just simply say is, you know, this is still a work in progress, but what we can recommend that you do to start is include the DEI.md file. Mm -hmm. And then make a list of things. Yeah. Maybe what to include in the file yeah we have a sample we have a sample file that we could point them to yeah so, that, that done does that seem okay yep sorry um so maybe just the first step for us is is as part of that page we finalize the dei.md file and if projects are interested in project badging, the first thing <clears throat> we just say is <laughs> we're not there yet. No. We don't have a evaluation process in place yet, but we can tell you that just including the DEI.md file is a, is a good first move. And it's something that we're, I don't see that file going away no. in however we do the evaluation. No, oh, it's, it's a good idea. So those are it's a good signal. Mm -hmm. And if we even if we if we do end mm -hmm. up like mm -hmm. doing some automation, that's something that we can pretty easily pick up through automation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can and if it's a human, it. what's that? Yeah, so exactly. we, uh, is this crap? <laughs> and so then, from a human review, we can also still point people to that. So it it still serves. I, do, I don't see it going away as a, as a file that we would need no, to use yeah. as part of the badging process. It's the thing that makes the most sense. So I think the, the update for project badging is we probably need to coordinate with the website folks and then finalize the DEI.md mm -hmm. file. Mm -hmm and make it available for people to include and kind of like recommendations on how you would include it in your repository that kind yeah, of all yeah. that kind of stuff. i recall that we're kind of close on it we are yep yeah so there's basically we have four uh, metrics that we're proposing yep. and one is still kind of in progress but i've been working on it and it should it'll go through the dei working group um and then we might just have to build out like some of the documentation around it like here's the file we recommend you put it in a community folder or we recommend you put you know some yeah. in some some folder that is available to the broader community or that you share yeah. it on your web page somewhere yeah. that, that it can be observed by people then maybe we recommend that they announce it within their community you know whatever the process is to include yeah <clears throat> <clears throat> yep. Uh, yeah, go ahead, Katie. Oh, I um no, go ahead. I'll comment later. No, no, I'm done. I'm done. Okay. So I just wanted to um capture that right now our action items on this are to coordinate with the website people and finalize the DEI.md file. I think so. I think that's the easiest first step at the moment. Um, then our next item on here is going to be to. I think we had a question. Yeah, oh. sorry. 
Yeah, so um, I do like the idea about like reaching out to um, other communities to kind of like participate in the review process. Um, but a question I do have is like, um, what what would that look like? Would it be like an open call, or are we do we have like communities that we have in mind, or like what would be the process for like reaching out to other communities to participate in the review process? We don't. I don't. As far as I know, we don't really have a process for that right now. Um, I think. Uh, Justin had made a few suggestions in those community minutes that I don't know who, I think Katie might have put those in there. Yeah, let me check. Yeah, so there were a few good suggestions <clears throat> came from that yesterday. So sustain are you I don't know if you're in there right now. Yeah, yeah, I'm in there. Yeah, so, I see um, three about Fedora Bajin. Yeah, and then sustain might be a group we could reach out to. And then I think you're familiar with all in. That, yeah. Yep. So I, we can talk with Demetrius too about building community around all in. Yeah, this, this, this was good. I was partially in the community meeting yesterday. So. Yeah. I think those would be good to start. And I, I have a, just for my own personal I need to reach out to to Demetrius at GitHub and kind of see where her thinking is also right now with badging. And I know Sean, you've talked to her as well. So yeah. <clears throat> so that's that. Yeah, I'm all good. We can. Okay. All right. Um. Well. I have right here that we're going to be resuming outreach to events. Um, I, guess I have a question on this. We had talked about starting a social media piece to do some more organic um, outreach and get it building without having to do one on one um, the intensive research all the time. Have we had an update on that? Um, so we, we haven't like had that like, mm -hmm. we haven't actually worked on um, it but I know like the last meeting we we're trying to like find um, the the doc so I kind of like scrolled down and found the um, the two documents we started the other time but yeah I think we can also start up that social part of things I think that's what we plan to do this year so I don't think we have really started we have not really started anything about social like doing the social outreach parts um but yeah that's something we could start up as well but for now i think we do have i was we were looking for the doc with the last meeting so i tried to find the doc and put it there yeah um i think we discussed that and i drafted out like a social media templates kind of thing it's in the comments from the previous minutes. If you scroll down, you I highlighted it there. Okay. Uh, Let me see. See, I went through and looked for the old work that we had, and I could not find any documents. <clears throat> so I think that that yeah, I'm glad they're to te templates. Okay. Right. Thank you. Yeah, I think um I just requested for access so. Yeah. So I'll yeah, put it on. Me, me too. I'll get the access right now. Okay. Yeah. Do we want to do this on, like, are we doing both on Twitter and LinkedIn or like what channel? We have been using Twitter. I don't know about LinkedIn. Yeah, Twitter is. Yeah, LinkedIn is pretty silent. I have updated the permission. Got it. Thank you, Anita. Yeah, if there, if anything needs to be pushed on LinkedIn, my network is pretty much all still event organizers and event community professionals because that's what my last business was. 
So I can push on there if we um, when yeah. it's time to. That's perfect. And I think that for pushing out and reaching out to the open source community, I think if we go through um, maybe asking other organizations that we've collaborated with in the past at, at a higher chaos level, maybe if they would want to push out or share whatever piece that we have. Yep. I mean, I could certainly ask, are you asking like hmm. retweets, Katie? Yeah, something that would still have, um, or if it's just, if it's an organization that is a chaos supporter, even having them push out right. into their open source community, we're excited to work with, or excited to uh, share that chaos is doing X, Y, Z and having it come not even resharing ours so that it's a direct out from them. Yep. I am. Um, yeah. The that, Linux Foundation is always very good, helpful. Yeah. yeah. In helping. Mm. And they have a mm. fairly large <laughs> group of followers. Yes, Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't think there would be. I mean, I could at least ask. I don't know. They have they have retweeted at least retweeted not a, a new tweet but they've retweeted chaos con uh, and I, yeah i'm i'm thinking if they're allowed to retweet they could probably just do a tweet probably so so that's an easy enough ask so I, this is great so thank you for putting this together anita Um, so an, Anita and Ruth, um, Elizabeth comes back from her vacation next week, like the middle of next week. So maybe we could just coordinate then to kind of just take care of these and, and get them out on Twitter, if that's okay with you. Yep. It says okay. There. Um. Okay, we have a point on here that says making the question how can attendees learn more about accessibility at the event? on diversity and inclusion, event badging form, more straightforward, change. Yeah. Um, can, who put this on here? Can you explain? Yeah, I was wondering to added it on there. So I was doing a review this week and I observed that the events organizer did not answer the question, how can attendees learn more about accessibility at the event? So I was thinking the question is too vague, it's not straightforward because Accessibility can mean anything. So I think it should be narrowed down to something like how can attendees learn more about venue accessibility and accommodation of special needs at the event? Something like that. It's more clear. Yeah, it's more clear part. that way. Yeah, yeah, more clear and direct. I like that. Okay. So that's all. Okay, you yeah, know, that makes sense. Um, is the easiest way to make that change just to do a pull request against the template? That's the templates was being filled out. Like, yes. Oh, that's it. Um, okay, so we can. And is the yeah, template I can't remember. The place this mm -hmm. question shows up? Do we know? We may not. On the, it's on the review, mm. on the application, 
and yeah, on the application and then on the website too. So I think so. Okay, so there might be two places that it has to be changed. I think we put this on the on the repo and then on the website because I think the questions are like listed in the form. Okay. Let me just go take a look here. Whoops. And then, um, are we, is there any more on that? I'm just trying to find, is it, it's not this. There should be like an application.md file somewhere, maybe. Checklist. Would it be here? I think this is the checklist for the reviewer. Yeah, you're right. Mm -hmm. Maybe you check the applicant's welcome. Oh, that's not there. No, <laughs> there's not much there. Moderators. <laughs> Where is it? <laughs> and it could be on the website. Maybe the only information could be on the website, like the form okay. on the website. That could if be. If it's not on the, if it's not on the um, repository, so it should be on the website. So programs, badging. Here, maybe? Yep. Okay. should be it. Okay, so finding it in here somewhere. <coughs> okay. Okay. Um can can somebody make the PR to update wherever the question is? What was the question? How can attendees learn more accessibility? Oops. Is this question under the in-person questions or is this question under the in-person and virtual event questions? I think it's in-person. Okay. So is there a similar question in virtual? Do we need to change one to like event platform accessibility as well? Yeah. I think so, because that's another one that confused me one time, too. So is that also here? <clears throat> um. The only place I oh there we go. How can attendees learn? This this is the closest. Oh, it looks like there are a few places this will have to change. Katie, I don't know the answer to your question right off. I'm gonna have to kind of go through this. Yeah, this is not marked down. This is not gonna be my yeah, territory. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, some of it looks like marked down and some of it at the bottom less like marked down than I've seen before anyway. 
I mean, it looks like the easy thing is like, there are a few places where this question shows up. I think I need to see the, like how that compares to the final yeah. product so that I know I can tell where that's actually at. Okay, okay. But I think overall, it's a good idea. Okay. And some live events are also hybrid. So we could just put event venue slash platform. Because like some events also have the app associated with the event. So it would be accessibility in person and virtual in some ways. Yeah. Okay. So that's there, I assume, I assume that's where you'd want to. Uh, yeah, just, okay. and that would make it easy to fix all of those places. We don't have to figure out if it's in person or virtual. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Thank you. I guess our last one is, is there a badging bot update? Oh, you mean? I think that would be <laughs> Enoch. Hello. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I don't know how to greet that. <laughs> <laughs> you got it all covered. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. How everyone's doing great. Um, about the boat, some progress. Um, the first weeks of the boat, um, we were trying to resolve some issues. We were, the boat's implementation was um, in um, a different framework, which is the ProBot, also a GitHub framework. But after a lot of um, consultation and also seeing um, the future of the scaling of the boat, we decided to shift to use the OctoKit um, library, which is um, tied closely with the GitHub API. Since uh, most of um, the bots, mm -hmm. um, the bots integration deal mostly with the API for now. Yeah, so um, for two weeks we were doing that. We ran into an error which was um, around um, the triggers that. Um, the web hooks, when someone submits an issue or when there is a comment, there is a trigger that has to inform the board that an action has happened. But we messed up the implementation that <laughs> took us two weeks to resolve that error with a lot of consultations um, from even someone from the GitHub maintenance um, team, wow. whom, whom I had a meeting with and um, he helped me debug some of those things. and. By last week, we had um, rewritten all the code of the previous bot from ProBot to the OctoKit library. Um, currently, the bot is, is deployed. The new implementation is deployed, but in two ways, which at the moment we are still monitoring. Last week, I had um, a very brief meeting with uh, Matt to discuss how best we would deploy this on digital ocean. And um, right now we have two deployed instances that are under testing and um, currently writing um, workflows, um, um, the testing and the tests for the bot because we want um, this bot to be first an open, an open project where everybody contributes, but previously, the contribution process was not really aligned um, in a way that um, if anybody contributed something, it would easily break the, the boat because there were no limitations or there were no mm. there were no mitigations sure. to when someone should um, commit to to how they should commit to the boat didn't have any tests at all. So those are some of the things um, I'm working on right That's now. Great. Yeah, so yesterday and today I was trying to reach out to Matt. Elizabeth is um, a bit away and um, 
the response time is a little bit long and that's understandable. So I was telling Matt to give me some more permissions on the repository because I wanted to test out some workflows yeah. that are related to the testing of the board. Yeah, but after that all is done, after the tests, the workflows, and after we've tested out the deployment, probably by the end of this week, the bot will be open for open contributions from all contributors, both new and anybody else who would want to fix anything because we shall have we shall have put measures for anything that that breaks off or any contribution that comes in. So um Sounds like a lot of effort, you know, <laughs> like got, a lot, got a lot accomplished. Yeah, I don't really feel that, but for now I feel, yeah, we're moving in the right direction. Um, after, after all that is done, the next thing we are going to do, um, previously, while you, we were talking about the project, um, project budging and everything, also the website, how people, how people submit, um, events for review. Those are some of the things we want to look at in the future, but immediately after we're done with this scaling and also the, writing the tests, we're going to write an algorithm for reviewing and assigning, um, uh, assigning issues to the reviewers so that um, you do not, um, once, a, once, a, once uh, an event is submitted, the algorithm automatically will select a reviewer depending on um, the selected parameters that we are still reviewing with Matt. Yeah. So that Elizabeth doesn't have to come and manually check out the reviewers. And after that, we shall see how, how best we do the application process, mm -hmm. both with yeah. the website team so that um, it's smooth. Um, like Ruth was saying, um, it's, it, it really doesn't need someone to have a GitHub account, but of course the things involved in, because when you look at the review process, someone um, sometimes is called to come in and give clarifications on some things under the comment section. So I think those are things that should be put into consideration while we're thinking of either um, putting the review application totally on the website or bringing it to GitHub completely. Yeah, so uh, that's it for now about the board. That's, that's and, a um, pretty substantial update. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, and, 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 and after, after this whole project, we hope the board can scale from not only budging, but to manage very many other repositories in the chaos community, taking care of um, all those other small, small automations that um, may need may not need human intervention mm -hmm. yeah. because i think there are very many more so in the creation of metrics i also think the agar library may need some automation so we're like we're happy to scale this bot from budging to yeah i mean we have and we actually have a slack bot with an endpoint that i mean we could probably put it into this framework pretty quickly mm -hmm. so two weeks of developer time so yeah I Sure. Yes, yeah, that's all for now. Thanks, right. Enoch. That was a great update. Yeah. You're welcome. Unless there is a question, otherwise I'm done with my submission. Okay. Well, well, I, think think we're, so yeah. we, I don't have any questions was without it. But. Yeah, we worked, you know. Thank you. I think that takes us to the bottom of the um, meeting. end of our agenda. Right on. I right. guess, Sean, I have one question for you. Yeah. Um, I have not gotten the stickers in the mail. I know for the reviewer um, oh. appreciation cards. I know that snail mail right now is taking forever so i'm wondering if it's that but i also want to make sure that nobody stole something out of my mailbox yeah i just sent it regular mail so okay i don't know, then I don't I'll know, give it I don't know how bad it is <laughs> where where are you located again i'm in columbia missouri they're not it shouldn't terribly be that. far away but they're probably sending it to new york or something to be processed 
Possibly Chicago. Or maybe Omaha. I don't know where the mail sorting. There's like mail sorting like centers. I don't know where they are though. I have watched mail get sent to mm. Pennsylvania before it comes here before when I watch trackers. So <laughs> Yeah. But yeah, all it takes is like one poorly articulated zip code number at the very beginning and gets on the wrong plane. <laughs> well, it I will watch for it. I'll keep you updated. All right. But I have the, I got the cards. They're cute. And then Elizabeth is coming back so I can get the reviewer list from her and we'll get those out. That sounds good. Thanks, Katie. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. All right. Have a great day. Yeah, likewise. Talk to you later. Thanks. Yeah. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye.